Welcome back, welcome back. As you can see, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time of day it is you're watching this video, I've got a mishmash of stuff laying on my, on my craft table in front of me. I am going to once again be taking part in Nina Rabina and Kylie Koo's Mixed Media, Media Emporium Facebook Groups Challenge. This week's challenge, week four of the July prompts, was metallics. And I, uh, I need a new message center, a new, um, uh, I like having something stuck to the fridge where I can write down notes, you know, grocery notes and stuff like that, or notes for the kids. And I find uh, rat traps, of all things, make some of the greatest uh, message holder, message centers around. If you're new here, welcome. And yes, I often use unusual items to create art with. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thanks for coming to spend some time with me again to see what kind of trouble I get up to in the, in the art studio today. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you would click that subscription button down below, give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Maybe you're, you don't enjoy my videos and that's okay too. And if you know somebody who might enjoy watching this video, would you please share it? It really does tell YouTube that, uh, that you enjoy these videos and that it's worth them promoting it and suggesting it to others. So without further ado, let's get started. So I just pulled random bits and pieces and bobs and stuff out, um, things that I thought I might wanna put onto this particular rat trap today. I've got some gears and stuff cut out that I'm gonna put on there. I've got a flourish I'm gonna put on there, but first I have to do a little bit of uh, decommissioning. It was a brand new rat trap for those of you that are thinking I'm going around using used rat traps. I got it at the hardware store. It cost me a dollar eighty-two. Now I've had this in my stash for a while but I'm sure they still are probably you know two to three dollars to, to get. The first thing I want to do is I want to pull this piece out. I don't don't want that. I'm hoping I can just wiggle it out here with my pliers. Couldn't find a screwdriver. There we go. Well, I probably could have. I just didn't look hard enough. I didn't want to. There we go. So that's one side out. And there's the other side out. I'll just lay those. Those will go into my stash of stuff and um, I'm sure they'll make their way onto another project somewhere. Now I want to pull that out of there just like that and then I'm going to want to pull this out as well. There we go. That popped out just like that. So now this is loose. Gives me lots of area to move around with once I'm done uh, creating, I can just uh, put that together or put that back over top. Now, something that I can do is I could take and pull uh, pull this out and, and then I'd have the whole thing open and ready to, to go, but um, I just work around it. I uh, want to cover it in a piece of paper to start with. I kind of liked this paper. It's the, the hand, the finger pointing. I got it out of this paper pad. It's from Recollections. It's a Michaels brand. It was a huge 180 sheets. It's not the best quality paper. It's really, really thin paper. And uh, so I don't tend to use it uh, on anything where I really need that paper to hold well. And it is, you know, you can tell it was bought from the hardware store. It's a little little rough around the edges here so I'm just gonna sand that down and I just use old nail files as sanding sticks once the emery board gets gets dull I just cut a new piece of sandpaper and glue it right over top there we go perfect so no no rough splinters there smoothed out. And 
There we go. Have you ever gotten your fingers stuck in a mouse trap? I've never had one stuck in a rat trap. Um, but uh, I've gotten them stuck in mouse traps accidentally over the years. When I was little, my grandma and grandpa had mice in their house, and you know, that's typical on a farm. All sorts of critters like to make their way into your dwelling, and uh, they had put mouse traps in all the drawers and forgot about them when we came to visit. And I stuck my hand in the drawer to find candy because it was the snack drawer, and uh, I got got quite a surprise when that mouse trap went off and was uh, stuck to my finger. I was fine. I survived. And uh, sometimes I have a tendency to overuse a certain finger, so I don't think I learnt, learnt my lesson. Sorry, I was completely off screen there. Need to make some more room here for myself. So all I did was I took and I laid my mouse trap down in the paper, traced, traced around it. And then I'm going to cut that out. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how am I going to get that underneath all of this? Good question. Um, I can take now and just slide it through and let the paper kind of rip around the edges and that's generally what I what I do this this is not one of those projects where actually what I might do here sorry I keep going off on the camera it's just one of those projects where you just kind of are going to um, make the best of the situation, just get things in place as best you can. Luckily this piece slides around here. So I just, I'm just going to wiggle that in, just maneuver it into place. Not really worrying too, too much about ripping ripping this paper or not. If it happens, it happens. At the end of the day, I do want kind of an older, distressy um, look to this paper and it's going to be covered. There's going to be so much stuff on it. You're really not even going to, um, not even going to notice it. Just going to bend that right over there, slide that into place. Now, for those of you that are uh, a little bit more perfectionist minded than I am, something else you could do is actually take and measure the inside and cut that down to size. That's just not something I tend to do. <laughs> My daddy used to always say, if there was a hard way to do something, I was bound to find it. So what I'm going to have is it's going to be a little bit offset on one side. And it'll come right out to the edge on the other side. And again, it's cheap paper. So I'm just going to hold it in place for the time being. Run that sandpaper down along that edge. Perfect. All right, so now let's get some glue on here. And I'm going to use my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. And wait for it to take its time, come in where it needs to be. 
I'm not going to be shy about it. I'm going to put a fair bit down. And like I said, it is easier if you actually take this whole piece off, but then um, you've got to hammer it back in place and sometimes that can be a big ordeal. So I just work around it. And if you want, I mean, you don't have to put paper down at all. You could uh, just take and um, you could take and just paint it, paint your background in. I don't typically do that because sometimes the uh, the red rat still shows through. And I find for mediums like uh, molding pastes and stuff like that, sometimes rather than having it go straight onto wood, I find it um, actually um, reacts and holds a little bit better if it's done on uh, over a paper substrate rather than the wood uh, just because sometimes the wood might have a finish or a varnish on it there we go and just like that it is covered Like I've said in other videos, once this bottle starts getting to the end, it tends to spit. I'm not sure if you can see that bubble. That's just what this particular adhesive does, but it is one of my favorite adhesives to work with when it comes to working with paper. All right, so that is down. a little more bite. So I'm just going to take that edge off. corners a little bit more to stress that paper a little bit more. There we go. The amount of the paper that I'll actually see when this is all said and done is probably pretty slim to be honest with you. Just to stress and age that all up. Alright, now using a stencil and using uh, Finnebar's Unicorn Paste. It is a glittery, glittery goodness and that is what I want to use. It's got all sorts of glitter and sparkle in it. I'm just going to Give it a little bit of a mix here. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking that up, but it's got like chunks of like silver leaf in there and it's got glitter. It should be lots of fun. And I'm hoping when it's all said and done that it will also resist, uh, give me a bit of a resist technique. So if I paint over it uh, or do, do anything over top of it, I'll be able to wipe that, wipe that off. I want uh, kind of splatters on here, make it look like something's been spilt. This is an old Tim Holtz. 
an old Tim Holtz uh, stencil. So I'm just going to load up on the back of my spatula. push that through. I am expecting that this dries clear and glittery when it's all said and done. All right, let's lift that up. Carefully lay that there and on this end I want these coffee splatters here so these rings that look like coffee has splattered everywhere so I'm just going to do this and then we will need to let it dry and I see the battery light once again is flashing on my camera so I will let this dry while my battery recharges and I am putting this paste on relatively thick here because like I said I want lots of dimension there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go charge up my phone, or my phone, charge up my camera battery, and I will be back. All right, so I'm charged and I'm back. I'm sorry, you'll probably hear my kitties in the background crying and meowing because. I've uh, come back out to the studio instead of hanging out in the house with them. So you can see that that unicorn paste has dried and it's left this really fun shimmer behind. Just shaking up some paint here. Looking for a paint palette. Not seeing anything. What I should have done is taken the time while my battery was charging and cleaned up my space but I didn't all right so I'm just gonna put out some paint here this is um, champagne by the deco arts Americana paint line it's metallic it's quite light um, but I like like using it because it'll just uh, give everything a shine and a shimmer and since this is a metallic challenge, you know, I'm going on the on the side of you cannot have too much sparkle and shine. Just flip this back over this way. All right. That looks good. Just going to take a wet wipe. Uh, actually, I'm going to let that dry. Yeah, I think I'm going to let that dry for a second or two and then I will take a wet wipe and wipe that down. While that is drying, I want to paint up these gears that I die cut. Uh, this is die cut from, let's see, excuse my reach across my table here. These are really old steel rule dies. Um, I've got the gadget gears and I've got the steampunk on the edge. So those have been cut from, from those dies using my Big Shot. And I think I want those painted. I've got a metallic black here. I'm gonna use that to paint these. And then I'll come in and add in some texture and stuff and I am really making a mess here. Alright, I'm back. Oh, that light is reflecting. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Uh, just I'm making a big mess on my paper. So let's uh, get going here. Everybody can see. Perfect. So I'm uh, just giving them a good coating of that black. 
in person, this black paint has a real metallic uh, edge or sheen to it, which I like. I use it on a lot of stuff. So how's your day going? You, this video will be coming to you on a Tuesday. I'm recording it on a Monday. So my weekend was pretty quiet. Didn't do a ton of stuff. I'm actually trying to think of what we did do. <laughs> uh, Saturday was pizza night in our house, so we made homemade pizza. Sunday was church. I had a new video go up on Saturday. Uh, it was my droopy flower video. If you haven't seen it, please go check that out. I was playing with alcohol inks. All right. I know it's so much fun watching somebody paint and it's so much fun just watching paint dry, isn't it? And then I have this big flourish here that I'm going to just paint in that black as well. This again is out of my stash. This flourish is a grunge board way, way back in the day when Tim Holtz first uh, started making a splash on the crafting industry. This was something he came out with. It was a product that I absolutely um, fell in love with. I was very, very sad when it was discontinued. There we go. All right, that is painted. Okay, so those things are gonna have to dry now, so I'll move that out of the way. I know all you see is a big black mess, I'm sorry. I'm gonna get a fresh wet wipe, and let's see if this is dry enough to remove off of. I just want to uh, just want to let that sparkle show through just a little bit more. There we go. And you put a thin layer of paint on like I did it. Um, it doesn't take long for that to dry. So we finally had a little tiny bit of rain here this morning. It wasn't much. It didn't even amount to much of anything, but it settled the dust and it's moisture. But now the day is starting to get hot and <clears throat> of course when you've got that little bit of rain in the morning it um, tends to also get uh, very muggy as the day progresses. Okay, so those things are going to dry and... I want to throw a little bit of let's see here. I've got my archival ink coffee. This isn't a project of mine if I haven't inked it up and aged it up. I could have done that on the paper before I um, glued it down but uh, I didn't want to. I do like that look that you get after the fact and uh, it really kind of brings that unicorn paste to life. Going over it here. There we go. And then just because I can I am going to do some heat embossing. Uh, I need my ink pad. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my Versamark ink pad. I've got the Recollections um, Champagne embossing powder. Just going around the 
edges of my rot trap. And then I'm just going to drop that down the side, whatever sticks, sticks. Put that back into the container here. All right, and do the same on the other side here. Okay, so I've got that in place. So I'm going to hit that with my heat gun. And then I will be right back. All right, so that has all been melted. And it uh, really picked up some of the texture off of that embossing paste that we put down. I know it's gold on gold. But that's okay, I like it. Uh, some of the paper where it wasn't adhered down started lifting and to me that's perfect. It just adds this, this whole nother kind of life to it. I'm gonna come in with some iced espresso. Um, it is like an Inca gold um, paste. I'm just gonna rub my finger in there and then come in and just darken some stuff up. Catch some of those edges a little bit. It uh, gives it a nice metallic grunge feel. There we go. It's feeling a little bit drier than I like. So what I'm actually gonna do is throw a little bit of water in there like that because I want to uh, hit this and just brighten this up a little bit as well. So I've just got a little bit on my fingertip. I'm just ever so lightly going to just brush that on. I know sometimes when you get metal on metallic on metallic, it kind of gets to be a little bit too much for me. Uh, it's never too much. <laughs> All right, so I've got that done. Now when I put this together, my notepad is going to be down here on this end. All right. Just want to make sure that that. So I want this. I'm just figuring out the placement of this. So I want this to be on there like that. I'm going to use my hot glue gun. Oh, sorry, that's message on my computer. My phone will probably go off here shortly. I can't locate my phone at the right this second. Sorry. All right. I'm just going to hold that down for a second. I know you, some of you are probably wondering why I went to all the work of putting this paste and stuff like that down when I'm just covering it. Uh, anyways, but for me, it's about the layers. I know, uh, I know in the videos, sometimes it's really, really hard to see the texture or it's hard to uh, get a, you know, the full, full effect. You know, I do the best I can um, with my videos so that you can see what's going on, but sometimes it just isn't quite enough. As always though, there will be, there will be um, close-ups at the end of my video. I also want to encourage you to make sure you check out um, my description box below. I will have a list of all the products that I've used linked below. Any products that I know you can still get or I, I 
have a source for getting them. I will leave a link to where you can purchase those items. I also will have a link to Nina Rabina and Kylie Koo's YouTube channels down there. Please go check out what they did for the metallic challenge. And this is going to get glued in here like that. And I'm going to glue this up here on the top. This is going to go kind of in the corner and this is going to come in here like that. So I also want to give these a little bit of love little texture, a little extra something. I'm having a heck of a time staying in frame today. I'm sorry guys. Not enough coffee. I only had one coffee this morning and then I moved on to iced tea and obviously not as much caffeine in that iced tea as what there is in my coffee. What's your favorite beverage to drink when you're crafting? Mine favorite beverage any time of day, never mind just when I'm crafting, but my favorite beverage any time of the day is iced coffee. I always, always have a pot of it in my fridge. I'm use my hot glue gun. Get that glued in there. I always have a pot of iced coffee in my fridge. And I drink that winter, summer, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, uh, I'm an iced coffee girl. Up here in Canada, we've got a Tim Hortons. And up until I moved out of the city of Saskatoon, I moved out into the country. And of course, uh, your country convenience uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't have Tim Hortons coffee. Uh, so I had to start making my own because I sure wasn't going to drive half an hour back into the city to buy a Tim Hortons coffee. And since I started making my own iced coffees at home, uh, A, I realized how stupid it was for the amount of money I was spending uh, in a week at Tim's and how unnecessary that was. And I really liked the coffee I was making at home way, way better anyways. Um, and so I don't really remember the last time I had a coffee from the coffee shop. Um, I know, it sounds crazy. All right, and I've got um, some junkyard findings. I'm, these are old, they were gifted to me. Let's see. Let's do treasures. They're um, they're a prima. They were a prima product. Do treasures on there. I think I think that'll be fun. I really really wanted to use this pocket watch as well, but I'm not sure now. I really kind of like just the simplicity, but you know. Can't leave well enough alone, or should I, since it's for telephone messages, should I put, I like that. All right, I am going to go and grab something um, that I want to use as rivets on the gears. And... Here we go. I've got a binder with with uh, all sorts of gems and pearls and stuff. Yeah, I really, really like how that is looking. Okay. So this isn't anything new. This this idea has been around for ages, but. I love using I love using pearls as rivets on the gears. And so I just they've got that double stick adhesive. If they feel like they're not going to stick well, I will put some glue down. But they generally stay stuck quite well on their own. 
this isn't a piece that will really um, get played with, as it were. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put all these pearls on and I will be back when that is done. All right, so I've got all the pearls on that I wanted. I'm just going to bring that up so you can see. And I've got a paint pen. It's a metallic gold one from Michaels. I'm just going to pounce that off on the side. And uh, just move those out of the way because they're going to fall. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer here. I know it'll probably make you dizzy, sorry. Um, all I'm going to do with my paint pen is color, color those in. And that's going to give me these fun gold looking rivety type things on. On, on the ends of the gears, right? So I'll finish doing the rest of those off camera. I do really like that phone on there. I do really like that light bulb on there. I do, I do. So I'm gonna just glue that. And of course that phone is hollow in there. And what I do when I've got a hollow areas I do tend to, oh, of course I'm out of hot glue, I do tend to try and fill up those little hollow areas a little bit if I can. All right, and then when I place it down, I always hope that the, uh, the hot glue will kind of trickle out and uh, hold everything in place. Now this is clear. So that's going to present a bit of a challenge. I definitely don't want to use hot glue to glue that on. So I'm going to use my three in one. And it looks like this is going to be kind of the only spot where I'm going to have a have a chance to hold it on. I am sorry, my uh, phone and my computer are just going nuts. You know, they don't make any noises all day and then you sit down to record and the one day when you forget to uh, put everything on silent, that of course is the day it's all got to go crazy. All right, so let's get that stuck down. I think that's going to hold just fine. And that, my friends, with the exception of finishing off coloring in those pieces in gold, is going to be my notebook. Oh, let me get a, a little pad. All right, I've got a little little notebook. And so then all I do is I take and I stick that notebook in under that end. And I put a little magnet or a hanger of some kind on the back and it hangs on my fridge and that lets me write my notes. So again, thank you so much for coming. There will be close up pictures of the project um, on uh, the end of the video and I really really once again want to encourage you to stop by Kylie's uh, Kylie Q Studios channel, Nina Rubina's channel, check out the uh, Facebook page um, Mixed Media Emporium and uh, take part in this week's color cha challenge Metallics. All right I know I had already said goodbye but uh, I uh, didn't quite, wasn't quite happy with, with things. It was too much gold on gold. So I decided I want uh, some of the pink Inca gold. 
Again, it's dried out, so I've just added a little bit of water in here, a little bit on my finger, and I'm just coming in around those edges. It's lightening things up a little bit, giving it a different, different look and feel, a different vibe. That's the great thing about paints and the great thing about about uh, all the different products on the marker on the market. You're you're able to really get get stuff layered in and change change the look. Um, just because you had an idea and a vision for taking your project one way doesn't mean that that is necessarily the only way or even the right way um, and again in art is there really a right or a wrong way it's whatever whatever way is is uh, appealing to you so that I really like that that makes that stand out so much more and keeping with that idea I think I'm gonna come in with some of the blue Inca gold paste and yeah, just like my other ones, it's quite dried out. So let's get some water in there. And I think I'm going to apply this one onto the gears here. Bring a little bit of that into the gears. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up. Oh, yeah. Now, would it have been easier to change my mind and do this before I glued everything on? Absolutely. Unfortunately, that's just not how creative muses always work, right? It's always, <laughs> always got to be, uh, be the hardest way to do it. And if you've been here for a while, I'm sure you've heard me say that my daddy always told me if there was a hard way to do something, I was the one that was going to find it. And as an adult, unfortunately, I can't say that that's changed. I've always been kind of a find a hard way, do it that way. Uh, I used to joke with my dad and tell him there were more lessons for me to learn when I did things the hard way. And in some ways, that's, <laughs> that's the truth. And I find doing things the hard way, it always tells me or always... Uh, really reminds me how uh, how not to do things. Uh, lots of lessons to be learned. I'm just throwing some of that onto, onto the corners here now. There we go. And I think I want to do something with this phone yet. I'm just looking here for my new Posca pen. I can't remember which bucket I tossed them in, you know? That's the trouble when things are in your way and you go on, the, on to a little bit of a cleaning frenzy. Uh, let's see, do I have a white? I do, I've got a white pen here. White paint pen. I think I'm gonna... Haven't used this one for a while, so it's going to take a bit to get that paint to come down. Oh yeah, I don't like this one because it bubbles and leaks. But I was thinking on the phone of just filling in right. I think so. I think that's what I'm going to do. Perfect, there we go. On to the last one here in a second. 
Nice. So those are all painted in. And then just put a white ring in there. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. That just gives it some definition in there. So now I think I am done. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye-bye again. <laughs>